Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A very large chunk of money has been approved for the CNMI that will address unmet recovery needs. Also tonight, a male is behind bars after sexual abuse of minors. And stray animals will now have a new place to call home. We tell you where. In sports, 40 years of promotion pays off with global dividends. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Great customer rep, always willing to go above and beyond for his customers. I truly hope she noticed, she gets noticed at work since I do see she is a hard worker. A few technician have visited my home was great and helpful, thank you. Thank you, you really keep it up. Your customer service is always very good. Awesome customer service with great technicians that are really helpful. Thank you so much, Sherlyn and Docomo Pacific. That's so sweet. <laughs> feels good to see this kind of messages because, uh, you know, we try our best to do customer service. We make sure that we will 100% uh, dissolve the issues. For all those people that are seeking assistance. I just want my customers happy. And help them out each and every day. I would want to go to a place with someone that's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For Thank you. Come to Docomo and uh, you'll feel like you're at home. Make it special. Make it 360. The best food and views all the way around. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Mariana's Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Mariana's Trekking. Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. Off a day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, October 16th, 2020. It's a historic and significant day in the CNMI as leaders announce the approval of an over $200 million grant. Sally Lemus reports. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has approved the CNMI's Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Action Plan, which brings in $244 million into the CNMI. Through the hard work of the Northern Marianas Housing Corporation and several federal partners, this is a huge opportunity to address the unmet recovery needs of the CNMI after Typhoon Sotolor and Super Typhoon U2. This is a story. This is a historic award. This is perhaps the biggest one single award in the history of the Commonwealth. And it's good because it provides for uh, housing as well as a major uh, portion for infrastructure development of our Commonwealth. NMHC Corporate Director Jesse Palacios says 43% of the money will be used for housing, another 43% for infrastructure, and the rest will go to economic development. Palacios elaborates on the action plan for the economic development. We asked HUD for a waiver and uh, they approved uh, um, up, up to $10 million of, of the CDBGDR money for promotion and marketing efforts. So. 
Um, and you know, this this is really not an activity that is an eligible activity, but because the CNMI relies on tourism, they they allow this uh, um, activity to be approved and to be given the money for you know for our economy. Palasha speaks on another great thing coming out from this funding. The CDBGDR money can also be used for uh, matching. So, you know, for the, um, the FEMA projects that require 10% match, uh, this money can be used for, for matching. So, you know, the, the CNMI doesn't have to put in local money for that. We can use CDBGDR money for matching. A significant amount of the money will also be going to projects on Rota and Tinian for home repairs. NMHC began working on the action plan since February of 2019. They began identifying a list of community priorities and projects and even underwent numerous revisions to accommodate new priorities. On August 31, NMHC officially submitted the action plan to HUD for review and early this morning it was approved, only awaiting the governor's signature and execution. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Limis. The Department of Public Safety reports that an individual drowned at the fishing base in Garapan yesterday. On Thursday, October 15th, around 12.30 p.m., officers were called reporting an overdue swimmer. When officers arrived, the caller stated one of his friends went out fishing and had not returned since 11 a.m. After continued search, the individual was found floating face down in the water with his snorkel mask still on. The individual was pronounced dead at CHCC around 1.17 p.m. Three individuals tested positive for COVID-19 at the Saipan International Airport yesterday. This brings the total number of positive cases in the CNMI to 80 since March. CHCC states the individuals were confirmed through testing upon arrival and are in isolated quarantine at Kanoa. Currently, there are seven individuals total in isolated quarantine. Of the 80 positive cases, 54 have been through travel into the CNMI, with 32 originating from the U.S. mainland, 12 from a U.S. territory, and 10 from a foreign country. A male is sentenced in court for sexual abuse of a minor, and the Office of the Attorney General is asking parents to speak to their children to find out if there are more victims. 38-year-old Alan Lafoyfoy is sentenced to 30 years in prison, 15 suspended without the possibility of parole, after entering a plea of guilty to sexual abuse of a minor in the first degree and sexual abuse of a minor in the second degree. This individual preyed upon young boys uh, and he pled guilty to sexual abuse of a minor uh, as to a first degree and a second degree uh, offense involving one individual. But it does not end there. After we had filed the charges in this case involving the first uh, victim, uh, we had two other victims, young boys, come forward uh, after they heard about the case and said that he had abused them too. And so we included those cases into the, the sentence that he received. These minors were around Lofoifoy due to the occupations he filled. He knew these, uh, all of these individuals by the nature of the work that he was doing, either as a bus driver or as a baseball coach, working at different volunteer or jobs in the community around children. The sexual abuse committed by Lafoyfoy occurred for at least a decade, and Bradley says the Office of the Attorney General is asking parents to speak to their children if they have been in contact at any point with Lafoyfoy. That's one of the reasons we're concerned and want to make sure that people know that Alan Lafoyfoy is a child molester, and if parents know that their children were around this man, they need to talk to the child, uh, because all of these are delayed out cries uh, that came out uh, years after the incidents occurred. Uh, we need to make sure that all of the children that he molested or bothered uh, have an opportunity to talk about it and get treatment. If your child makes an outcry of abuse, contact the Department of Public Safety where additional charges can be filed and the foy foy can be prosecuted further. From the time that this child reported the crime uh, until the case was prosecuted successfully was less than six months. Uh, that required the coordinated efforts of DPS, DYS, and the AG's office. And we're very grateful that all of us were able to do this in a way that protected these children. 
The Department of Public Lands is looking to create a new lease with Hyatt Regency located in Garapan. DPL Secretary Marian Terragazzo says the current lease with Hyatt expires in December 2021, where a new lease can give the hotel an additional 40 years. And while DPL wants to keep Hyatt in the CNMI and in Garapan, officials from the hotel have not submitted important documentation that is needed. We were summoned up to the legislature early this month and um, representatives from the Hyatt, such as uh, the general manager, Mr. Nick Nishikawa and Josephine Mesta were also present along with their team. So we explained to the legislature that uh, um, Public Law 2084 has many requirements um, and that Hyatt has not submitted a proposal fulfilling those requirements. Yeah, Mr. Nishikawa, uh, in his opening statement, um, upheld what I had mentioned, that they have not submitted a proposal. Tara Gazo says representatives from Hyatt Regency have organized a meeting with DPL for Tuesday, October 20th, where they plan to submit their proposal. After five long years, stray, lost, abandoned, or surrendered animals will have a new place to be housed. Sally Lemus reports. CNMI leaders and officials break ground for the long-awaited multifunctional animal shelter project. <laughs> One, two, three. All right. The first animal shelter in Lower Base was damaged by Typhoon Sotolor. Mayor David Apatang says just when they were about to open a new one, Super Typhoon U2 came. The operation of the new shelter will help us catch up with our work of controlling population of dogs and cats since the Lower Base shelter was shut down in late 2015. The shelter will offer residents with pets a place to bring their pets with veterinary care the shelter will have a clinic here for state veterinarians and visiting veterinarians that may offer our animal health care. And despite the economic downfall the CNMI currently faces due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Mayor Apatang says there is enough resources to make the shelter a successful one. We have enough with the help of uh, FEMA, a CIP and a local delegation, uh, Chairman J.P. Sablon and uh, Chairman Blanco and the members of the local delegation for the assistance, you know, for the additional funding. They gave us 140000 to put in into this project, which is actually uh, very helpful for us. Uh, otherwise, we won't start this today again. Governor Ralph Torres says this project would not be possible without the collaboration of government agencies and the leadership. And no project in the CNMI will be successful if you don't have the right leadership from the vision, from the relationship that we have with FEMA, to our local representatives, the leadership of the legislature. This is what we have today, a groundbreaking for something that we've worked so hard. Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios says this project has been in the works for years with previous mayors and department secretaries. The resiliency and the, the, the continued effort of the mayor and, and his staff to get this thing done. Um, Really happy that we finally got it, uh, got it going, and it, it'll be done in uh, six six months. So we look forward to, to seeing it. Department of Lands and Natural Resources Secretary Tony Benaventi also shares a comment. We've been coordinating this with the mayor for such a long time. Like he said, even from the former secretary Richard Salmon, uh, there was also a, a plan to utilize some of this portion of this property, which belongs to the LNR. However, with the request of the mayor, we did relinquish this back to DPL and then DPL uh, granting the, the property to the, to the mayor's office for this uh, wonderful new uh, facility. The shelter will have two sections, one for kennels able to hold about 40 animals and another section for administrative offices, examination rooms and clinics. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Lemis. Coming up, a warm welcome is given to some special guests who stopped off on Saipan. Find out more after the break.
In order to keep Sinamai Road safe, both drivers and walkers need to do their part. Here are some tips for pedestrian safety. 1. Be sure to press the crosswalk button when crossing marked crosswalks and intersections. 2. Hit the road by placing one foot forward to show drivers you are intending to cross. 3. Make eye contact with drivers before crossing the road. When you are driving, drive at safe speeds, drive alert, and always scan the road and sidewalks ahead for pedestrians. Remember, it's the law to stop for pedestrians when they are crossing at both marked crosswalks and intersections. For all those going out each day, doing what they can to hold us all together, we're here to help those helping us all by keeping our lights on. The Tan Sri Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The Foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. The Department of Public Works is helping you reduce the cost of utilities in your home. It's called the 2020 drive through Saipan Energy Efficient LED Lighting Promotional and Educational Awareness Campaign. Where tomorrow, October 17th from 9 a.m. to noon, the Energy Division Office will be distributing eight LED light bulbs per household for free at the Garapan Fishing Base. The light bulbs are to assist customers through energy efficiency and conservation efforts. Residential customers must present a government-issued ID and a copy of the most recent utility bill which with the individual's name on the account. Business, rental property owners, and landlords are not eligible to avail of the LED bulbs. Local dancers give a warm welcome to Japanese sailors who made a quick stop on Saipan. Sally Lemus has this story. After months at sea, crew members of a Japanese military vessel are welcomed to the shores of Saipan with local dancers performing traditional dances of the Sinamai. The ship is named Kashima, a training vessel of the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force who arrived at the port of Saipan on Wednesday morning. Jose Kwan, operations manager of Saipan Shipping Company, says they docked at Saipan to stock up on supplies. Primarily, the, the mission was to pretty much refuel uh, restock the provisions and to refuel, uh, I'm sorry, not refuel, but uh, to restock the water as well. Yes. All right. And they're not, they're not allowed to get down, do you know why? Uh, they're not allowed to get down because of the quarantine parameters for COVID-19. And uh, in order for them to disembark the vessel, there has to be, it has to go through the entire process that everyone else goes through. And so that's why the ship is, uh, all the crew are confined to the ship. Partnering up with the Japanese Society, Japan Saipan Travel Association, and the Japanese Consular Office, performances were arranged for their departure. Usually, uh, for the cruise ships that come in, we'll usually organize this for the departure. And so, they wanted to have this as a, as a way to kind of just uh, show a little bit of the, the community of Saipan. So, uh, that's why they organized this uh, nice little welcoming slash uh, departure ceremony. The crew on board showed back their appreciation by giving the locals a show performed by the Japanese training school band. The vessel arrived from Hawaii and then left this morning making their way back to Japan. I'm Salilimis for KSPN News. Thank you, Sally, and welcome to Saipan. All right, coming up in the KSPN 2 Sports Report, the latest feature of our NMI student athletes on the rise.
One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're going to go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If, you're, if, you, if you set up in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm gonna have Vince do here is extend his arms up here and all he's gonna do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. Reach long and push your hips back. So as you can see, he's already in good position. Now he, all he's gonna do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's gonna do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. Thank you for being here with us. For finding ways to keep things happening. For making things feel a lot better. Thank you. Energize, realize, feel so good just to be alive. Time's a gift, my time is free. I can spend it on you, you can spend it on me. I can say you'll be blown away by the change you see, you see me. And I feel alright, dance alright, put a little flavor in my life. Thank you for staying strong with us. And for us. Thank you for always connecting. For keeping us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us that despite this distance, we are still better together. Dokumo Pacific. Better together. Point of sports fans. Point of sports fans, the NMI Junior Tennis Program continues to march forward. Although there are no tournaments scheduled for the near future, there are players who are practicing as if there were. There may be people that have more talent than you, but there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you. Young Star Shining, brought to you by the Tan Soo Lin Foundation. Jun Yu is a 12-year-old 7th grader at Mount Carmel who picked up this sport a couple of years ago. Oh, I started playing tennis when I was like 10 years old. 10 years old? That was only a couple of years ago. Why did you get involved? Oh, because my mom said play tennis with my friend, so I played. You do what your mom tells you? Yes. As a young learner, he's finding inspiration from the players around him as he thinks about his future. Are there any tennis players that you really like watching play here? Like who? Like... Him. He's good. Eh? What do you like about his game? Like, he has, so, he has a good swing or like serve. How good can you get? I don't know. You're only 12 years old. Yes. How good are you going to be when you're 18? Very good. Very good. That's your goal? I think so. How good do you want to be? You want to play in college? Yes. Professional? Yes. Yeah, good luck. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Soo Lin Foundation. All right, let's face it, Saipan does not export much. There is one thing, though, that is spreading across the world. 
In a world of constant change, one thing doesn't change, Mr. Fager. The Marianas High School PE and health teacher who's been promoting his hybrid sport of rockball ever since he came up with the idea 41 years ago. How has his idea spread around the globe? I've been emailing and I've been on Facebook and I've been sending stuff out all over the place, including I've been trying to get Brazil and Argentina and I've been sending them all kinds of information. The country that has most adopted rockball is India. We have India, the most populated, one of the most populated countries in the world. Every state in India has a rock ball association now. So that's like 22, that's like states in 22 different organizations. And I was really happy to find out they're going into the university. The latest outreach, Argentina. We had this uh, sports group come out of Argentina called Coda, Coda Cursors. It's a sports, international sport organization for um, the alternative sport programs. And they have a lot of different sports out there. It's not like a week, it's like hour after hour after hour all these different sports. So he contacted me about going on Zoom. I, I don't know how to get on Zoom. I had to go out and get some help to get on Zoom. And I got, and I was all freaked out about that and Mr. De La Cruz helped me out. And so I got on Zoom and then I made the presentation. As a result of that Zoom conference, a couple of countries already want to send teams here to play. The guy in Kenya, <laughs> Africa, wants to bring a team to Saipan. I thought that would be a great idea. That's going to cost a lot of money, but that's a great idea. And then that was like two or three weeks ago. And just this week, uh, we were going through reorganizing some sports things over there in Liberia, which is also in Africa. And uh, I sent him a certificate of registration for rock ball, which he'll be the govern. There will be the governing body when I do that in, in the country. So he emailed me uh, yesterday that he wants to bring a team to Saipan also. And I thought, wow. And that's not all. Venezuela. Venezuela contacted me. I forgot about Venezuela. But they contacted me a few days ago. Fager is an old school teacher learning new tricks. You had to do a PowerPoint? I never did one before. <laughs> so I had to get I helped to do a PowerPoint. So then I, I up, uploaded on the PowerPoint. And that's the one that I sent you. And I used, I used newspaper clippings from 40 years ago to put on. I stacked it in there because I wanted historical content. And I wanted all of our, all of our kids to be in there, too. I got, some of those guys are grandfathers and grandmothers right now. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Great customer rep. Always willing to go above and beyond for his customers. I truly hope she noticed. She gets noticed at work since I do see she is a hard worker. A few technician that visited my home was great and helpful. Thank you. Thank you. You really keep it up. Your customer service is always very good. Awesome customer service with great technicians that are really helpful. Thank you so much, Sherlyn and Docomo Pacific. That's so sweet. <laughs> Feels good to see this kind of messages because, uh, you know, we try our best to do customer service. We make sure that we will 100% uh, resolve the issues. For all those people that are seeking assistance. I just want my customers happy. And help them out each and every day. I would want to go to a place with someone that's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Come to Docomo and uh, you'll feel like you're at home. Go-karts, off-roading and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com hours 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. It was hot today, 90 degrees below, only 80, heat index 107. All right, tomorrow, partly sunny, some scattered showers here and there, southeast winds, high 89, low 79, seas 4 to 5 feet. Sunrise at 609, sunset at triple nickels, and we've got a new moon right after that. It's official. 
the weekend begins right now. Have a great one. We'll see you back here on Monday.